we often take for granted that things have always been like this. But actually, of course, to understand the past is to understand how things change. It's to understand the changing patterns of demography, of style, of language. And if we don't understand that, we get into a very, very fixed and rather anxious position where it's as if we always have to defend the status quo. It's very important for churches to be aware of their past. And I think the identity that churches have is absolutely crucially locked into where they've come from. Um, certainly in my experience as a parish priest, as a vicar of two parishes in London, um, it was once I discovered where the church had come from in its past that I began to make sense of some of its present. London is a diverse and multicultural city with particular challenges for all faiths. The Building on History program is a knowledge transfer project offering unique access to many of the historical records of the Church of England to inform current and future strategies. With funding from the Arts and Humanities Research Council, the project involves four partners, the Open University, King's College London, the Diocese of London and Lambeth Palace Library. Well, knowledge transfer is about building on existing research that I and others have already done. It's about making the our archives here at Lambeth Palace Library accessible in new ways to people outside the academic community in a way that can really make a cultural or social difference to the wider community. Lambeth Palace Library is the main record office and, and history centre really for the Church of England. It holds records of the Church of England in its history going back before the Reformation even. I think it's really important that a project like this goes ahead because it's all about learning from history. Uh, and we've already had one session where we've invited people from a range of different faiths, many of whom went away saying, we'd never thought of using our history like that. We thought of it as something perhaps dry and dusty and telling an interesting story of the past, but perhaps not that relevant to today. And I think what's really interesting about this project, it's taking history and it's putting it very firmly here and now today and saying, this is relevant for what we do today. The project concentrates on research carried out on 19th century church history. Well, we're particularly interested in the 19th century because of the parallels with uh, migration to London and indeed within London. Uh, this was a period when uh, numerous people were moving to the capital, to the big city. Uh, we can see the same nowadays, uh, people coming, uh, in this case, from abroad in the early 21st century. Uh, but still many similarities of a rapidly changing and very mobile population. We came up with a series of themes, uh, particularly thinking about secularisation, what is uh, happening to church attendance, uh, why and how certain churches uh, in the 19th century and indeed nowadays can buck the trend which is generally downwards but by no means universally so. A lot of people have, I think, a very simple story about the secularisation of Britain. Once upon a time the churches were full and now they're empty. Well actually if you look back to the 19th century churches weren't that full. Sometimes too many churches were built for the communities that were around in a very very optimistic spirit. Bishop Charles Bloomfield built hundreds of churches across the capital during his time as Bishop of London in the first half of the 19th century but it was his successor, Bishop Tate, who took on the challenge of how to fill those churches and who reached out to the whole community. Here we have just two of the diaries of uh, Bishop Tate. In uh, the year 1857, he decided to take his mission to the streets. And the diary records that he went out extempore preaching. Uh, he preached to the, the gypsies in their encampment at Shepherd's Bush. And later, he was preaching in the, uh, the railway works of the Midland Railway at Derby to the railway workers in 1860. In the absence of a welfare state, the church took on the role of carer and educator, reaching out to the poorest communities in London. On the right here, we have St Bartholomew's Bethel Green. As you can see, a whole sheet of activities that are going on in the parish, from day schools, tobacco sociables for the men, little girls sewing classes, boys carving classes employs some otherwise idle hands. So he's clearly picked on particular social groups or little groups that are hard to get at, and he's come up with things to try and engage them and involve them. 
Moving forward to the 21st century, you can see a vicar saying, what would I put on to engage with my community now? How would I engage with the parish in Bethnal Green in the 21st century? The church is very much involved in today, working with those perhaps in poverty, in debt, and alongside that would be projects such as parent and toddler groups and uh, working with young people, children, um, summer clubs, those sorts of projects. The role of the church as educator became more formalised in the 19th century. People sometimes forget that the, the whole ideal of universal education was something the church contributed to British society if the church hadn't been there, and indeed the nonconformist bodies as well, providing basic primary education for everybody it wouldn't have happened. Now, we've moved on. The state has take, properly taken responsibility for that, but very often still in partnership with the Church of England and with other Christian communities, increasingly, of course, with non-Christian communities too. In uh, East Finchley, the church was built in 1846. In 1847, they opened a school. And then in 1855, there's a fascinating pamphlet uh, reporting on the first eight years of the school and uh, claiming that it has made a very dramatic difference to the social and moral character of the area. The Building on History project aims to disseminate its findings across the Church of England and to a wider public. One of the main outcomes that I'm hoping to see from this is some sort of a toolkit um, so that an individual parish can pick it up and see how it can explore its history and what it can not only do with the findings but how it can make those findings relevant for its mission action plan. So in other words it's not just about saying this is our identity though importantly it is that but it's also saying so what are we going to do about it. If it's modelling good practice for the Diocese of London then I would firmly suggest that it's modelling good practice for the church across the country and not just the Church of England, but across denominations and I think re resonance is very much across other faiths as well. The greatest mistake is for the church to think we have nothing to learn. We did it successfully in the 19th century and that's it. On the contrary, we learn from the 19th century something of the method by which in a time of rapid change you can respond effectively. We hope the project will also look beyond the church uh, to the local communities of which the church itself has been an important part of their history. And also we'd like to think that in exploring uh, the interrelationship between past and present of one kind of institution, we may be developing models that can be applied to other kinds of very different and entirely secular institutions in the future. Thank you.